This scenario begins with Allied forces in ports in North Africa preparing for the invasion of Sicily. When you enter amphibious transport mode, you'll see hexes in dark blue where the amphibious forces will set up for the invasion, hexes in red where the units will come ashore, and hexes in light blue where airborne drops have been pre-plotted. To participate in an amphibious landing, you must be in a port and stacked with an amphibious headquarter. Notice unlike War in the East, when you left click on a hex, only one unit in the right unit bar will be selected. If you click again on the hex, it will toggle between the different units. If you double click, then all units in the stack will be selected. Notice on the amphibious headquarter unit on the right that there's a button with a hex number on it. That's the target hex for the invasion. There's also preparation points that have been accumulated by the amphibious headquarter and each unit in the stack has its own preparation points that have been accumulated. There is also an invade button and pressing on this button will launch an invasion to be resolved at the start of the German turn. So let's do that now. Now you can see that the amphibious unit is at sea and the other units in the stack are on ships. And if you scroll over, and we see the units are now out in the uh, hex off the beaches that are going to invade. So now we can go to some of the other invasion ports and also issue invasion orders. Notice at the top of the screen that the number of transport ships and cargo ships are listed. These are the ships that are still available. And that the numbers have been going down as we've been launching the invasion. We'll order the last amphibious headquarter, of which there are six of them in this scenario, to invade. And we can go over to Sicily and we see all of the invasion forces are now ready and they'll be coming ashore at the beginning of the German turn. Two important rules to know is if you change the target hex of an invasion, you lose a significant amount of the preparation points that have been accumulated. The second is it's a good idea to attach multi-role ranger and commando units to the amphibious headquarters before an invasion. This is because they have a special ability to form up and invade any adjacent hex that's empty before the main invasion forces go ashore. On the turn you order the invasion, it's very important to move headquarters and follow-up combat units out to sea near the invasion sites. So we'll start by moving the second U.S. headquarter Notice when I move into port and then go into sea movement mode, the port symbol has a number in it that indicates the number of thousands of tons of capacity that port has. And the unit has a transport cost of 9,600 tons and there's 90,000 capacity, so plenty of space. So we'll move that unit near the units it controls. Next we'll go get the British 30th Corps headquarter. Move it out to sea. And the British 13th Corps headquarter also has units involved in the invasion.
Next, we'll go and find the American 2nd Armored Division. And move it out close to the beaches. This will uh, make it a lot easier for the unit, a lot quicker for the unit to get ashore on the subsequent turns. And the headquarters need to be out there to be within the command range of their units as they launch the invasions. Next, I'll look to find the American Army Headquarter, 7th Army. Move it out to sea. And the British 8th Army Headquarter. Any one of these naval movements could lead to a transport being sunk during the movement, in which case some troops will be destroyed. With the invasion forces positioned, the next step will be launching the airborne assault. 